So hello everyone, my name is Anna Klem. I'm from the Bioimage Informatics Facility at SciLab Lab in Sweden. And today I will talk about image analysis of biological data using cell profile. So the outline of the course is that we will first um, introduce the data set and the image analysis question that we want to solve. And then the core part is a step-by-step -step workflow construction in cell profiler. And in the very end, I will also tell you where to continue and which sources there are. So the data that we will be working on are images from the Human Protein Atlas. And in this project from Emma Lundberg's group in Sweden, they wanted to know for each protein of the cell where in the cell it is localized. So what they did was they generated antibodies against 12,000 human proteins and then they immunostained uh, 22 cell lines and then they did automated confocal microscopy. And then they end up with images like that. So what you can see is now in green, this is the antibody labeled protein. And then the question is where in the cell is this green signal? So here obviously it is inside the nucleus or here it's on the nuclear membrane or uh, yeah, here it would be on the centrosome, for example. So I brought with me a subset of these images. So I brought with me images where the protein mainly localizes either in the nuclear membrane or in the nucleus or in the cytosol. And the question of today is that we want to automatically determine where in the cell the protein localizes. And what we can use to find this out are two more channels. So we also have labeled the microtubules in magenta and then the nuclei with a DARPI stain in blue. So in the first step, we will really only focus on does the protein localize in the nuclear membrane or in the nucleus. So we don't look at the cytosol. And to be more precise, what we would like to do is to get the outline of the nuclei and get the outlines that or selections that just cover the nuclear membrane, so just the outer rim of the nuclei. And then we want to measure the mean intensity, like for all nuclei, and then we want to measure the mean intensity just in this nuclear rim, also for all nuclei. And then what we will also do then in cell profile is we want to then calculate a ratio. So once we have measured the mean intensities, in the nuclear membrane and in the nucleus, in the total nucleus. We want to measure then for each nucleus, we want to measure this ratio. And then obviously if the ratio is higher than one, then this would indicate that the protein localizes to the nuclear membrane. And yeah, if it is uh, one, it would be everywhere in the nucleus. Good, so in this first step, our workflow will be that we want to first split the images. So we have these three channels and we want to split them in these three channels. So microtubules, um, nuclei with DAPI and our signal. And then using the DAPI image, we want to get the outlines of the nuclei and also the outlines or selections for the nuclear membrane. And then once we have these outlines, we want to measure the mean intensity in these two outlines using our signal channel. And then once we have the measurements, we can do, uh, we can calculate this ratio of the mean intensity in the nuclear membrane and in the nucleus. Okay, so of course we will do all of this in with using cell profiler. And here a few facts about cell profiler. So it was published in 2006. And since then, it has been highly used and highly cited. Initially, it was written in MATLAB, but also quite some time ago now, it was written, rewritten in Python. And that's quite cool because you can write then even your own plugins in Python and add your own modalities if you really want to. So um, just to point this out again, so this was from Ann Carpenter's group at the Broad Institute, which is like a mixed institute of MIT and Harvard. The first thing that I would like to do is to just have a look on the on the window of cell profiler. So we what we see is 
uh, here on the left, this is where we will build our pipeline. So we see already there are four modules already there. So they are basically processed from the top to the bottom. And these are the modules that help us to import our images. And then if we want, we can extract some information of the images, like some names of the channel and so on. And then what else, whatever, everything else that we want to do, we, we will add then here. So this is kind of, we will build our workflow and you will see this. And then on the right side, you can see um, the windows to configure then these different modules. And then what else can you see? So there's this little question mark and this gives you then always help to the module that is active. So for example, I was having active the metadata module, then I click the question mark and then you get a lot of information about this. Okay. But now really let's start with the first step and that is we need to import our images. So what you can do is from the downloaded um, material. So these are the images that we will need. And as you can see there in this folder, there are all these images, but there's also a small CSV file giving information about the images. And you can just drag and drop the entire folder. And then the default here is also that it should import only the images. So the CSV file that there is will not be, will be ignored. So, and then what you also can do is to click on these images with a double click and then they should open up bit slow and then yeah the color coding is a bit uh, fixed so it just gives like the first channel so it's a three channel image that we are importing and then it gives the first channel automatically the color the lookup table a red lookup table and then the green and the blue and I think at least I don't know a method how to change this but to get a first impression I think that's fine and then what else can you see? So you see that here the dimensions in pixels and then when you hover over some pixels then here in the t in the bottom you see the gray value uh, like the intensity values in all three channels. And then um, so if you come from Fiji you will be maybe a bit confused that these values are all like 0 0.7, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 so in um, cell profile, what happens is that your, the images are normalized between zero and one, and one is the maximum possible value of your bit depth. So if you have um, an eight bit image, then this would be like in what would be 255 in Fiji would be one in cell profile and so on. For example, where I'm, I'm now with the mouse, we see that it has a quite high red value, I guess, but that is just our DAPI stain, so that's not so informative, but from our in protein of interest, which is still in green, there we can see that it has rather low intensity inside the nucleus. And when I go out of it, then we see much higher, actually it's a saturated image, it's not so nice. We see a high value outside of the nucleus. Okay, and so what else can you do? You can also go to the tools and measure the lengths. So that is a bit, um, yeah, you need to click and drag and draw. So you was, here you can see that there's this uh, red arrow and if I want to get now the diameter of my nucleus, this would be 215 pixels, which you see in the lower right corner of the image, of the, yeah, of the window, of the window, next to the red, green, blue values. Okay, so that is what we can do with the images. And then we can close this again. And yeah, if, if you want, you can check out a different image to see where this is localized. So here the green protein seems to be localized more in the nuclear membrane. Okay. So 
then for that exercise, we do not need to extract any metadata. And, but that would be, so if you want to know what this module is doing. So for example, in our images, so this was the plate number and then this is the well, and that was the position. And then you could automatically extract this information and say, okay, the plate number is 1,772 and so on. So this is what you could do in this, in this field. And then what we need to adjust, however, is this names and types field. And um, so we want to say that these images are color image. So, and so everything that has more than one channel is a color image, which is okay. And then we can give them a bit, some more informative identifier. So when we build up our workflow, then of course we want, yeah, let's say we would, uh, we do something with our images then, and then it's good to know with which image type I'm working with. So all these images now kind of get the flag that they are raw images. Okay, and then you can also click update and then you see that, okay, all these images are called raw images. So when you assign a name here, you're not allowed to use blanks or also like some like special characters. And let's say I've used a blank here, then this will create an error. And you can see this with this little red cross, uh, like red surrounded cross. And then also if you get such a cross, okay, that means you have an error and you need to solve it. And then you can hover with the mouse over it and you get already some idea of what the error could be. So here it says uh, names must start with an ASCII letter or under bar. And okay, it starts correctly, but you get probably already an idea that there's some problem with the, uh, with kind of, how you named your files. So, yeah, so you're not allowed to use blanks. Good. Okay. So then we have already uh, successfully inserted our images and then we go really into step-by-step -step processing the images. So the first thing that we will do is we will, um, we said we want to split our images from a stack into three separate channels. So to add now new functionalities to our workflow, we can go to this um, adjust modules plus symbol here. So then you get the new window and this is where you can get modules from. So this collection of modules that we can choose from. And so we want to split our image into three channels. So this has something to do with image processing. And then there is this module called color to gray. And that is the one that you would use here. And so you select it and then you can either double click on it or say add to pipeline. So I usually double click on it. And then it is already here inside. And as I said, it's going from, it will be processed from the top to the bottom. So it's inserted here and then we need to configure it on the right side of the window and of course we would now need to say okay which image do we want to split i mean in our case now we have only one image type for selection so we only have these raw images and then um, we actually want to split this into three channels and it's an image that contains several channels. So we can say in the first channel, we have um, the microtubules and then our image contains more um, channels. So it contains actually three channels and the second one is the signal image and the last, I one is the nuclear image. Let me double check on the slides whether this is the right order of our images. Oh no, the other way around. Okay, so the first channel was the Delphi image. Okay, so what you need to do then, once you have this configured, you can go to start to test mode. And that means you are now testing your module that you just have configured. 
and then then you can run step and then you can see the output of your module and then we can also check whether i now named the channels correctly and looks good so the output is from this model now is this beautiful image or we can see the beautiful image to check our output and then we can see this was our original image that we had added and then this is uh, the DAPI channel, this is the signal channel, and this is the microtubal channel. Uh -huh, and here was unconcentrated, sorry. So we have DAPI is correct, signal, and here we have microtubules. Okay, so we already successfully split our image, and I wanted to talk a second about. Um, this test mode and analyze analyze mode and so on so before going into test mode you have these two options analyze images and start test mode and analyze images is when you have done all your workflow then it would run over all your images that we have in our input folder and but for now we really want to set up our pipeline so this we want to do in the test mode and then it uh, set profiler loads only the very first image and then for this first image you can then add the new modules and test it what happens for the for this image but you could also then test it for other images so it's kind of um uh, yeah a mod, mode of testing what you're doing and building your workflow and then also once we are in the test mode you can do a step then it was, does really one module after the others but especially then when you have like more modules in the end then you can also just do run and it does all the modules uh, that you have like from where you are then it runs all remaining modules that can also be helpful and then the last thing that i should say is this little eye here and the eye is um that you see the output or not so now of course we want to know does it work as we want it the color to gray module and then we have the eye open but if we close the eye and then say step then it does it like it does split the channels but it does not show us this final window and this can be of course nice again if we have a lot of modules already if our workflow is growing then we don't want then if we are just like a one module in the end and need to run everything again we don't want like 20 um, windows popping up good so that was again a bit more general how to deal with say profiler and now we go back to our workflow so what we want to do next is to um, get where are the nuclei and there's a module in set profile is called identify primary objects and i think i will really just directly insert it so again i go to add to modules now this little window where i saw all my modules somewhere in the background so it's here and then this would be under object processing you would find the this module called identify primary objects and so for now let's not use the advanced settings and then we again um, define what's input and again we will get some output and the input in this case will now be the DAPI image so the image where we have our nuclei and the output will be like outlines of our nuclei and then the only really important thing that you have to adjust is the typical diameter and I think for these I was giving a quite high range of 150 to 500. And then um, we can look at these two options in a second. So I can now press step to see whether this module is nicely configured. And sometimes you have to press step several times for some reason. So now it's processing something. It is slightly slow. And I guess now it's done. So it's, I guess it's somewhere in the background. Yeah. So 
for that image here, I have now this following output. Um, again, what we see is again our input image. And then I will zoom in now into one nucleus. And um, so you can see in that lower image, you can see the, the outline. That's quite nice to really see, okay, does the outline fit well to my nucleus or not? And then here on that image, you can see uh, what's called a labeled mask. So that is, um, we have um, several, like in principle, we have only two classes, like a background class and a nuclei class of pixels. And then every nucleus, however, is also identified as one object. And then one object gets one ID. So when you hover over the mouse, with the mouse, you can see it has an intensity of one. So this has, is our nucleus number one. This would be nucleus number two, nucleus number four, and so on. Okay. And then I told you about these two settings. So um, maybe I can show it here. So you can discard objects that are on the border of the image, which we will do in this exercise. And then these will be outlined in yellow. And then you usually also discard objects that are outside of the diameter range. And these would then be um, outlined in magenta. And I think here you could also see this. So there is, was a little kind of dirt here. So I'm zooming in. So there's some kind of maybe some nucleus in a different plane or so I or it's just some background and then this was has did not fall in our size range and then it gets these magenta outlines and is excluded from further measurements which is then also seen here because here you cannot see any labeled nucleus. I asked you to discuss like which are the steps needed in Fiji and I asked this because I, yeah, I find it always quite nice to see of how many things you would need, indeed need to do in Fiji. So let's say you have an image of, um, you would be only interested in nuclei as we are now, and you would get like to get this kind of labeled uh, mask. So then probably what you would do is some kind of filtering. So here I wrote a Gaussian blur, but maybe a uh, median filter also would be nice. And then you would uh, set a threshold to binarize your image. So every pixel above the threshold is a pixel of nuclei and ex every pixel above uh, below this intensity threshold is a pixel of the, thresh of the background. Then you would probably fill small holes that you have then in your binary mask of your nuclei. And then you would uh, declump um, nuclei that are very close by running a watershed. And then once you have done all these objects, I mean, you have a nice mask, you can then get the single nuclei objects by running this analyze particles command, which is also called a connected component analysis. And then in, you would end up like with the selections for each single nucleus um, as we have it now in Serpufida. And just also to point out that in set provider, it's automatically kind of um, adjusted that you then would run it on your entire image set. So when we are out of the test mode and then run analyze images, then you would do this for all the images. Whereas in Fiji, if you would like to do this for all images, then again, you would need new steps. So what I would like to explain now are what are behind these advanced settings. And I um, chose an image. So it happens with one of the, or at least one of the images and probably more than one image, it happens that um, some nuclei are not properly segmented. And then for example, you can see that they are ripped into two parts. And when you open these advanced settings in set profiler in the identify primary object module, then you can see that there are some something with distinguished clumped objects. So something happens and what um, to 
distinguish clamped objects and we have seen that in Fiji you would use a watershed and indeed of course also in Sepufaila there's some watershedding happening and then uh, in cases like that apparently this went wrong or sometimes it can of, of course also happen that you have two nuclei that were not uh, distinguished as individual nuclei although they should and then it's good to know like where you can tune this and so let's have a look on these settings here so they say methods to distinguish clamped objects and then there are two uh, um, options one is is called intensity and the other one is called shape and let's have a look on what happens there behind so when we choose the intensity uh, option then it really starts with your normal grayscale image so let's say you have two nuclei very close to each other then um so if you don't know what a watershed is then what what would happen is let's say you would draw now a line here and look at the intensity along this line and then what you can do is then to identify okay where are my maxima this you can call then also watershed seats and then so you know that okay there's a maximum here and there's a maximum there so these are probably then two different nuclei so you can kind of uh, set a color and identify here and identify there and then you basically yeah you make this watershed so what you can imagine is um, you now select all pixels that are co uh, connected until a certain intensity threshold and then when they these pixels meet this is where you could draw a border and then obviously when you like choose a different threshold until until where you do this water shedding then um, you get uh, like bigger or smaller objects but always you kind of know where is the border so that would be the theory behind this intensity watershed or the intensity op option there and then there was the second option that is called shape and with the shape you start with a binary image so after thresholding and then after thresholding the first thing that you would do is in what's called a euclidean distance map so here you transform again your binary image into a gray scale image but the gray value reflects how far a certain pixel is away from the background so a pixel somewhere at the border would be very close to the background so it would have then a very low gray value in the Euclidean distance map and the pixel in the center somewhere would have like a very high um, intensity value and um, so the gray values in the Euclidean distance map they don't reflect like or, like your original image like the, your how many photons you collect collected with a camera or something so but what the, the euclidean distance map what the gray values reflect is the shape of your object and then having this euclidean distance map then again you can find maxima as we have done before in the intensity option and then using these maxima then you again do this water shedding and then you can again identify two separate objects. But okay, I just explained you this um, theory of, okay, we, we find these two maxima and then we fiddle it and where it meets that we know it's our border of our, of our nuclei. But then in real life, of course, data is much more noisy. So here's such an example that we have two nuclei and um, they are very close together. So we would like still that these are two nuclei like it's identified as two nuclei and then what you can do is to again draw a line and look at the gray value along this line so it's a line profile and then if we do like I just explained okay I told you okay let's try to find maxima and as you can see if you try to find maxima here you find at least uh, it depends of what you consider as a maximum but you find many and then if you would like to do a watershed from there then you would kind of fragmentize your nuclei into many pieces and then 
However, what you can do is um, to filter your image. So you could say I uh, use a Gaussian filtering. And so you s smoothen a lot your image. And then again, if we again draw now the intensity along this line, then you get a much smoother profile. And then you really get only two maxima and then which you can use as seeds for your watershed. And also in the advanced settings, so, or actually also already in the basic settings, what happens is when you enter a typical diameter of your objects, then um, set profiler knows, does automatically some smoothening and kind of the, how strong it should do the smoothing is defined by the size that you enter here. So that would be one method to kind of get rid of these many maxima is to smoothen it. And what you could also do is when you go back to these original values, you could say, okay, I don't believe that the maxima, so my nuclei is as big, so maxima cannot be um, closer to each other than a certain distance. So this is kind of auto, also usually automatically calculated. And um, so when you enter the typical value, then these uh, kind of declumping parameters are automatically calculated by cell profiler. But what you can do is indeed to kind of change it to, no, I don't want to calculate them automatically and I want to smoothen my nuclei, for example, stronger to make sure I only get like two uh, maxima here. And this is an example where this would be needed. So in this image, what you can see is there are many nuclei and some are bigger than others. And in general, also they are quite, so inside the nuclei is quite some uh, fluctuations in intensity. And then indeed there is one nucleus which is uh, deep, like fragmented into two parts. And then I told you that entering the typical diameter of the nuclei, then this kind of smoothening takes place. So if we kind of say, ah, actually my nuclei are a bit bigger, then uh, the smoothening is uh, with a bigger filter kernel, so stronger. And then it is for that nuclei, then nucleus then perfect. But since I said, okay, I expect the nuclei to be bigger, then these small ones are excluded. So that's also not uh, so ideal. And then what I then indeed could do is to say here, oh, no, I don't want to automatically calculate it, but define by myself of how much I want to smoothen my image. And then if you do this, then you get kind of the perfect result. What I wanted to tell you now in these last two slides is, so first point is, there are usually like several, ways how you can get to a certain result. So like here, there are some examples of using either the intensity based uh, watershed or the shape based watershed and then tuning some parameters, you can get to quite nice results. Also, although here probably this image would be the best. And also what I also wanted to point out is sometimes you cannot get the optimum. So sometimes you kind of repair one nucleus, but then mess up another one and so on. So, and sometimes, okay, you manage to adjust it perfectly on one image, but then for another image of your image set, it's not perfect anymore. And that is kind of normal. So you usually need to, um, accept a certain error rate, but you always need to make sure that the error kind of affect all your cells equally. So if you have like a mutant that has suddenly much bigger nuclei, and then in your mutant, then you, you mess up all the time the segmentations, where in the wild type you don't, then that's a bad thing. But if you have like in mutants and wild types always, let's say 1%, or I don't know how much error I would feel comfortable with, but with a certain amount of error, maybe 1% is already a bit high, then, then that's fine. And then also in the breakout room, there was a question with this thresholding and the threshold correction factor. 
So as in Fiji, in Simplifier, you have um, some auto threshold methods. So again, you define, you have a threshold to say this is background, this is a nuclei, and then you have these auto methods that kind of look usually at the histogram of your image and then define a threshold. And sometimes, so it's quite, it's good to use these auto methods and but sometimes you see that they are always a bit this kind of threshold that you use calculated using this method is always a bit too high or it's always a bit too low and then you can use this correction factor so let's say the me the auto method would get a threshold of a gray value of 100 and you set the correction factor to a 0 0.9 then your threshold would would be reduced to a gray value of 90 and so on so that can be also quite helpful to know. And in theory there, you can also pick that you want to have it um, manually, that you want to manually uh, set the threshold and then use for all your images. So we said now what we have done were basically only uh, these two steps. So we were separating the channels and then we got the outlines of the DARPI, like of the nuclei from the DARPI image. And then what we will do now is, um, so we got these outlines and we would like to have then also an outline that covers only the nuclear membrane. And this is what we will do now. And then having the selection, we will measure and calculate the ratio. So we were now having these two modules and then we get the outlines of the nuclei and then we can um, now produce selections that are a little bit smaller. So we can say we shrink our nuclei by, uh, uh, here I entered seven pixels, so we get like a nuclei that is a little bit smaller. Then we have like the normal size nuclei and the smaller size nuclei. And then we can subtract these, like the smaller ones from the larger ones with the module that is called identified tertiary objects. So identified tertiary objects sounds so fancy, but in principle, it's just does like uh, one object minus the other. And then what is kind of left over is then our nuclear membrane. And um, then once we have that, what we want to do is to measure then in our signal image, we want to measure then the gray values in the selections that are our nuclei and in the selections that are our nuclear membrane. And then once we have measured it, we can calculate the ratio. That is kind of, so this is then this calculate math module that always looks a bit clumsy <laughs> to do it, but it, it works. So you can say, okay, I want to have a measurement and I call it a certain name. And then in this measurement, I want to divide something. And then you say, okay, what do you want to divide? And then you say, okay, I want to have a measure of the single objects. There I want to have the nuclear membrane measurement of the intensity and then you pick the mean intensity of your signal image and then so that is the one and then the second one then of course are the nuclei and then okay if you then select the same then set profiler knows that you need to divide these two things in the end we have now measured everything but um, of course we want to know these measurements so we need to tell SAP filer that it needs to um, export these measurements to a spreadsheet so to some csv file and there you can take the export to spreadsheet module and um, so maybe i just do it now and you can also do it try to do it in parallel so I'm still here. The identify primary objects. I still need to quickly change that I wanted to um, to distinguish by shape. Okay, and then we said, okay, now we have the outlines of the nuclei. The first step to get the outline of the nuclear membrane is to add a new mo model that is called expand or shrink objects. 
So that is also under object processing, expand or shrink. So again, I double click and then I say, I want to use the nuclei. I want to shrink them and I want to shrink them by a specified number of pixels. And there I set seven pixels. Okay, that's already it. So if I run this, actually it's not so much visible. So I include directly the next module, which was to identify tertiary objects. And then the larger object. So I again double clicked, it was included. And now I start configuring it. And then I say the larger objects are my larger nuclei and the smaller object, which is subtracted are the shrunken nuclei. And then I can call this nuclear membrane. And I think I haven't pointed it out yet, but you have always these question marks here where you can get help, not only for the entire module that was down here left, but here you get like really the help for each of these steps. Okay. And then maybe we could now press run and see the output until that step here. And that is also good. We should also save it at some point. So here's the shrunken objects. We cannot see it so much. Maybe here you can get an idea that they are smaller also here, but you can really see an effect of course in the output of the tertiary objects because we have, we said, okay, we have the nuclei and the shrunken nuclei and then the output are these rings covering just the nuclear membrane. Okay. <laughs> And then, as I said, we should also save the project at some, from, at some point. Oh, no, Amble course. Because if it, if it breaks, then it's saved. <laughs> okay, so now we have the outlines of the nuclei. We have the outlines of the nuclear membrane. And now, basically, we want to do this measurement of the intensity, the ratio. But to do this first, we need to first really measure something. So we measure the object intensity. And then we say, we want to measure this on the signal image. And then we want to measure the nuclei and the nuclear membrane. So kind of the intensities in these two outlines using the image signal. Okay, and then we can do finally the math. And that is, I think, where is this actually? So if you don't know where in these subfolders it is, you can also go to all. And then you can hopefully find it. Or you... Uh, go to the slides and say calculate math it's called okay so it's here and then as I said we want this is a bit um, it looks very complicated but in theory we just want to divide something so we can say this is our ratio look membrane nuclei and then we want to divide something and it's some measurement of single objects. So each uh, nuclei is treated as um, separately. And then we can um, say this is our nuclear membrane. And we want to do a measurement that has to do something with intensity. And then we have the mean intensity in the image called sigma. And then we divide it by, again, object measurement of the nuclei and it's again an intensity measurement and the mean intensity on the image signal. Okay and then the very last step would be to uh, export this now to a spreadsheet. So again I'm in the all subclass and go there. 
and then you in theory you don't need to change anything so it will be saved in your default output folder and that is a good moment to check what is your default outputs um, folder and to do this you go here to the view output settings you click there and then you can say see what is your default output folder for me that's fine and if you're not happy with this then you can browse to a new folder okay and then you can see that there's this exclamation mark and this is we can hover over it it says in uh, this that this will not produce output in the test mode so in the test mode it will not write data into a csv file and only if we exit then the test mode and really run it on all our images then it will produce the csv file so this is nothing to worry about this warning So we are already exporting our measurements. So in theory, that's kind of the core part, but um, it's always good to create some control images. So I, our outline's really good enough. And to create a control image, again, you will need some, a few steps. And the first one is, so we have our outlines and what we want to do is one image where we see the cells and then we want to see the outlines and first we need kind of an rgb image where we see the Im like <laughs> just an rgb image which reflects our raw image from the beginning and what i did here was using the gray to color module to uh, then create an RGB image where I say, okay, the microtubules should be in red, the signal should be in green, and the DAPI should be blue. And then I call this a certain name, I call it raw RGB. And then maybe I should just do this. I need my mouse. Okay, so we are now here. So we said uh, gray to color. So we are creating a RGB image on which we can then display the outlines. And I wanted to have, so I included it with double click and then I select mic tubules for the red image and then signal for the green image and DAPI for the blue image. And I had called it uh, raw RGB or take something that is that you feel comfortable with. And then once we have this image now, we want to display the outline on this image. And then this would be uh, overlay outlines. So we want to display it over this newly generated image called raw RGB. And we can call it, I don't know, raw overlay. Oh, yeah. And um, in theory, I could just pick now the nuclear membrane and maybe choose just white as color. And I will again now test these two uh, modules. So I just press run and wherever I stopped, it will now execute all the other modules. Okay. So that was the first module was this color to gray. So it's kind of, you probably will not see this so well, but I can cl right click on that image and say, it should open it in a new image. Then maybe you can see it better. So it kind of, made an RGB image in the color order that I defined. So that's good. And then in the second module with the overlay outlines, then we can already see that then we have our nuclear membrane outline. And you can see that, for example, here, the nucleus is maybe a bit suboptimal segmented. So it has this kind of strange shape, which is, um, probably not the biology or one would need to go really to play a bit more with the contrast to see what is the 
the real shape of this nucleus. Maybe it's also like this, I, I don't really know. And then what is also helpful to do is, um, so that's just a detail, but once you get your output, then cell profiler will say, okay, nucleus number one has these values, and nucleus number two has these and these and these measurements. And then ideally you want to know which nucleus in your image is not nucleus number one and which is nucleus number two and so on. And to easily check this, you can um, also then use this module here with this display data on image. So again, I go to my modules and this is, uh, I will also go again to the day all modules and say display data on image. And then we now take our control image that we have generated that has the outlines. So we want to um, display object measurements and we want to kind of display, let's say the object number of the nuclei. That's what we want to do. Just that then later we can, we know like which measurements belongs to which nucleus. And so this is usually under number and then it's an object number. And we want to do this on an image and the image is our raw overlay, which is the RGB with the overlay, with the outlines. And then yeah, I like to have white. We can have it a bit bigger, I don't know, 20. And then we don't want to have any decimal because it's just the object number, which is just an integer. Okay, we can also have a look on that. Good. So there's still, sometimes it happens. So I press step, but it was still doing the old overlay outlines step. So I don't really know why this happened. So I press step again. And then, <laughs> okay, it's a bit big maybe. We have the display data on outline. So now we can see these giant numbers. So maybe that's a bit too big. So I will say maybe 12. So again, I change something, then I can check using step. I can check again the output. Okay, and then the last step now is to insert uh, that a module that is saves now these images. So that would be uh, under file processing save images. And that's also very easy, I find. So you kind of say, I want to sa save an image and this image is, um, I did not, maybe I should call it better. So let's call this control image. So that was in the module before. So, and then I should find this here. That's our control image. And then of course you want to save it with a certain name and then for each image that we then process later, I want to save one control image. So I want to, that the file name is kind of extracted from my original image. And then I have only raw images and then I can kind of append a suffix saying control and then it saves this also in the output folder. We are kind of happy with all these modules and then we really now want to run it then for all of your images. So we want to run it for all of these images. And then for this we need to exit the test mode and press analyze images. But what I recommend to do before pressing analyze images is to close these eyes because otherwise for all these images it will create the output uh, windows here and that's a bit annoying. So you can go to window and then hide all windows and run. So they will not be shown. Okay, and then you just say analyze images and it will start doing all this, what we now um, created for as workflow. We'll do all this for all the images in your folder. I would suggest we have a quick look on the output. 
what we got is of course our output images and then so what you can see that you always get a lot of uh, csv files and um, so you get basically a csv file for each single object that you created so if you we were shrinking the nuclei and even if we don't use it for measuring we still get a csv file just that in this csv file you don't find so much information and then when we use an object for really measuring then um you then you get also the csv file of course but then it's kind of filled with a lot of measurements so then let's for example look at the nuclei where we that we had used for measuring and there's to the update okay and then you now can see all these there are a lot of measurements so in principle what you can find is kind of um, the objects that you used for measuring then the module so we had for example the measure object intensity and then so this is an intensity measurement and then what is measured and in which image so in our case for example here we were me measuring let's take a kind of yeah for example the maximum intensity in the nuclei um, selection inside the signal image and then you can then see okay it has the the image number one and then these object numbers and then that's why i told you okay for the object number it's nice to have kind of the object number also in your image that you always know which object was used and to kind of know which one is image number one you don't find it in that csv file and so you would need to go to the image csv file and then you can find here image number one and then you would find somewhere the image yeah for example file location there you would find the image name so what do i do with this output so usually it's of course nice to kind of combine these csv files in excel you can do it but i i think it's really i don't know i've never done this by myself i've just seen other people combining files who didn't look so nice and but if you know python or r it's quite simple or even in nime so if you don't want to go into real programming then the nime is quite a nice tool and then that's very easy to kind of fuse then all these csv to one big file and then also the last thing that i wanted to mention is when i started analyze images then there was like it said it will take 22 minutes but this number usually then goes down a lot so in the end i think it just takes took uh, six minutes or seven minutes or so i also wanted to show one more thing now i remember so if you have a lot of measurements and you really know that you're only interested in only one measurement then what you can do is in cell profiler in the export to spreadsheet a module you can say i want to select the measurements to export and then you can press this button and start like really saying okay i want i don't know the, the name of the path and so on i personally don't like to do this because it creates I don't know i always forget to select something and then i have to run it all again and i don't know i'm not the person who likes who i don't know who likes this but uh it of course it can be helpful if you have like a cleaner csv file so what i would like to do in the remaining of the time is to look into how would we get now outlines of the cytoplasm and that's important and then um we will see how we how far we get with the very last steps but they are not so important but the this kind of how do we get the outlines of the cytoplasm is very important so that's what we should still cover for sure okay so we got successfully the outlines of nuclei and the nuclear membrane and then of course it would be nice now to also measure is the protein in the cytoplasm or not and then okay so of course what we need to know is how can we segment and which images should we use and okay so let's say 
you have um, uh, so which image should we use which channel should we use okay we should use the channel of our microtubules because this is our marker of the cytoplasm and um, then so this could be one of these images and then in theory you could think okay okay we have again some signal and some background and we want to have like an individual object that sounds very much like what we did for the nuclei so let's also try this module that we had used for the nuclei which was to identify primary objects and if you try this with an image like this this you will fail and the reason is um that kind of the, what we saw with this watershed for declumping the objects, this will go completely wrong for an image like that. So you can see then the output is some objects actually it finds quite nicely, but uh, many of these cells are kind of either fused in points where it shouldn't, so the declumping did not work, or it finds some strange fragments, so that it was kind of declumped too much. And I would like to spend a bit more on this slide to explain you why this happens. So we said, okay, for this identify primary object, what happens is we can either declump by shape or by intensity. And when we had looked at the intensity, we were saying, okay, let's smoothen a lot that we kind of get these very smooth um, profiles. And on the smoothen profiles, we are searching for seeds our watershed and when you try to do this so here I smoothen it and then I try to kind of find maxima in Fiji and then of course you find quite many maxima and every maxima each maxima would then be a seed for your watershed so it would generate one fragment so that's why you kind of fragment get a, a lot of fragments of these cells and then you could say, okay, then let's try this kind of um, declumping by shape. So we said for declumping by shape, what happens is we first create a binary image by setting a threshold. And then on the binary image, we uh, run the Euclidean distance map. And then on the Euclidean distance map, again, I can try to find maxima to, uh, to get kind of seats for our watershed. But since these objects are not like round nice like the nuclei but the cells are kind of like this overall again even this approach will not work so what we do is to get kind of the outlines of the cells or cytoplasm is we use the module that is called identify secondary objects and the trick is basically that is that we use the nuclei that we had identified before and we use the nuclei as seeds for our watershed and then we do kind of a intensity watershed um, on the image of our cytoplasm of our microtubules and this is now in the okay so we can just do this um so we can do this maybe i would insert it before we do any measurements and control images so this was where these steps for the nuclei and nuclear membrane and then i will now insert a module and so i will insert this uh, identify secondary object module and then as I said, we are using the nuclei as seeds. So these are our input objects. So I say nuclei. And then I do this kind of uh, intensity based water shedding on the image of the microtubules. And I can call this then cells. So again, I will go to test mode and I want to run now all these modules until here. So I can activate the pause sign and then run and it will run then until this point let's see it takes a while of course
Okay. So, um, yeah, that's what it looks like. And I, I mean, even with these kind of default settings, this looks pretty good, I would say. And um, there, then, when you when you go back to the settings of the secondary objects, there are this kind of uh, select the methods to identify the secondary objects. And there are different methods to do so, which I will not go into detail so much now. But basically, what I usually do is to just try out which works best, and then you can see that um, sometimes borders are detected better in one method than they are in a different method. Now we had, um, we had the secondary objects to get the outlines of the cells. So it starts with the nuclei and then grows and gets the cells. And to get the outline of only the cytoplasm, we again need this identify tertiary objects because what we will do then is to kind of subtract the nuclei from this outline of the cells. So let's also do this. So after the identify secondary objects, I include then another identify tertiary object module. And then I say, okay, the larger ones are my cells and what I want to subtract are my nuclei. And then this is kind of the default um, usage of this module. So that's why they already suggest the name cytoplasm here as output. We can have a look. Yeah. So as we were kind of subtracting, when we were cr creating the nuclear membrane selection, we were subtracting the smaller um, nuclei, the trunk nuclei from the normal sized nuclei. And here we are now subtracting the nuclei from the cells and we end up with these cytoplasm selections. Okay, so we have created the cytoplasm still together. But then again, I measure, then I include now the cytoplasm to our measure object intensity module. So we had already that we measure the nuclear and the nuclear membrane. And then I added an object and say, said I want to measure also cytoplasm. So the pixel values in my cytoplasm region. And then I had also included a second calculate math module to calculate again the ratio between um, the intensities of the cytoplasm and the nuclei to again see at one spot uh, is in this cell the signal more in the cytoplasm or is it more in the nuclei? Could have actually then also added this to the overlay outlines. That's maybe something that I should add. And you can also again find in the this kind of catch up folder, you can find then the final pipeline. Again, you just need to add then the images where they are on your computer and you need to adjust the output folder, but then you can check again the, the final pipeline. And then for these uh, last minutes, I just have uh, three slides of kind of finish up. So as I said, like the output, I personally like to, yeah, I like to use Python for kind of also plotting the data. You can use R and NIME is really also a very nice tool for, for handling then the CSVs. And, um, yeah, when do I prefer a cell profiler versus other software? So cell profiler I like a lot when you have kind of these large amount of images of the same type and especially kind of these kind of images like we had looked on today, which you have quite often, like you have some cytoplasmic marker, you have some nuclear marker, and then you have something, some dots or something. And then set profile is really very fast and straightforward because also all the saving of the out like control images and so on is is quite uh, fast to do and then but then if you kind of need to tweak stuff more i feel like i have a more specific like specific question then it's i pr personally prefer fiji 
but um, it's also good to check what other modules there are there around. So there are also example pipelines on the SAP Profiler website. And then you can see that there are also kind of modules for C elegance and so on. So it's some images that are maybe less obvious, but still very easy to handle the SAP Profiler. And then, okay, this is just to remind you, this is like a free and open software. So meaning, it's very, so it's open source is good. You can sh share it very easily, which is good for reproducible uh, research. As you can see, it's quite educational. If you can see what other, like how other people build up their workflows. And then um, what is very important, if you use this in a paper, for a paper, then please also pop, um, cite the publications of the developers. That's always important. And um, to find more resources, there's the forum, which is a very active forum in general. So you can ask questions there. And as I said, there are these many examples on the SAP Profiler webpage.